This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1942, Five Ways to Tackle Debt While Federal Student Loans Are Deferred, by Kelly Herstrom of MoneyGalCoaching.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to today's post and continue optimizing your life. Five Ways to Tackle Debt While Federal Student Loans Are Deferred by Kelly Herstrom of MoneyGalCoaching.com. Federal student loans have been deferred since March 2020. That's two full years of your loans not accumulating interest. If you haven't been tackling your debt head on, now is the time. As jobs are restored and payments continue to be deferred, you'll be able to make the dent in your debt that could change your life. Here are five ways you can reduce your debt. Number one, continue making payments. Payments on federal student loans were initially paused as we were facing the pandemic head on and millions of Americans lost their jobs or were seeing a reduction in hours. Now that employment is up, you should really look at your finances to determine if you can afford to start making your monthly payments again, even if they aren't required. By making payments, you're putting more of your money at work since your loan isn't accruing interest each month. Your entire payment will be going towards the balance, making it easier than ever to pay off that loan. If you can't afford to make the entire payment, assess how much you can afford. It's easier to start adjusting to what life looks like with the new expense before it's actually required to allow yourself some room as you're testing your payment affordability options. Number two, pay more than your minimum. Really ask yourself, Can I afford more than the minimum payment or do I just not want to? If you're barely scraping by without excessive spending in areas like restaurants, clothing, or vacations, then maybe the minimum payment is all you can do right now. Be okay with that. As you have time, start to look at how you can increase your income. If you can afford to pay extra, how much extra are you able to pay each month? This will be determined by your existing income and expenses but a budget can help you answer that question. I like to use a debt reduction calculator spreadsheet from Vertex 42 to see when you can be debt-free, allowing you to pay with different monthly payment scenarios. This might be the exact tool you need to get motivated to pay extra on your debt. Number three, focus on high interest debt. If you have debt with higher interest rates than your current federal student loans, you may want to think about tackling that debt first, utilizing the avalanche method. Use the mentioned calculator to assess your options. Using money earmarked for your student loan payment to pay extra on other debt will allow you to reduce the principal on the high interest debt, allowing you to pay less interest over time. This will only be your strategy during the deferment period, But if history repeats itself, extensions of this grace period will continue to happen. Number four, adjust your budget. Whether you're struggling to make a payment or trying to calculate how much you can afford to pay towards your debt, a budget can be a helpful tool to answer all of your questions. The 90-day expense tracker by Ditch Debt Bundle will help you to figure out where the heck your money's been going. From there, you can decide if you need to tighten the belt in areas of excessive spending or eliminate spending in areas of habit or convenience. Remember, following a plan to pay off debt can be as aggressive as you want and it doesn't last forever. I followed an intentional, semi-aggressive plan to become debt-free and while 20 months seems to last forever, it still included vacations, happy hours, weekend festivals, and home repairs. Paying off debt can happen in tandem to enjoying life. And number five, increase your income. At the end of the day, sometimes we just have to increase our income. Take a look at your free time and decide if a side job is necessary to tackle debt. This doesn't mean working every weekend at a job that pays barely above minimum wage. Get creative and truly work smarter, not harder. Utilize your hobbies, skills, certifications, previous experience, and network to find work that will pay you what you're worth. Once you have additional income coming in, don't waste it. Make a plan to use that money to pay off debt, save for a large expense, or increase your emergency fund. 
While working with clients to become debt-free, the problem I often see isn't that they don't make enough money. It's that they don't have a plan for their money and they don't give every dollar a job. You just listened to the post titled Five Ways to Tackle Debt While Federal Student Loans Are Deferred by Kelly Herstrom of MoneyGalCoaching.com. If you're listening to this post in real time, please note that the federal student loan deferment period is set to expire on August 31st, 2022. There have been several extensions of the federal student loan payment and interest freeze. The suspension was first put in place on March 13th, 2020, and has since been extended by legislation and via executive order. Hopefully, you're one of the many borrowers that have used the freeze to pay off other debts or build your emergency savings over these last 18 months. And resuming payments isn't going to be a huge hurdle. According to a recent article on the Student Loan Planner, you have a few options to consider when it comes to your repayment. You could do nothing and just resume the payment plan you had before the forbearance. You'll still need to recertify your income by your new required recertification date, but you could squeeze out some extra months of lower payments if your income increased during the pandemic. If you have an income-driven repayment plan and your income is now lower than from before the pandemic or you've had a child during this time, you can recertify your income earlier than required and lower your monthly payments. You could also look at switching to a different repayment plan. For example, let's say you're currently on the income-based repayment plan, or IBR, that uses 15% of your discretionary income to determine your monthly payment. If you switch to the pay-as-you-earn plan, or payee, your payment will be based on only 10% of your income. You still have a couple of months to figure out your strategy, so while you consider this, I highly recommend you check out Travis Hornsby's speech from the Economy Conference titled Student Loans Never Need to Hold You Back. It's available now on the Economy Conference YouTube channel. That should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Thursday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.